Hello, my friends. I hope you are well. Can you hear me, everybody? I am going to have a good fun chat to you today. It's been a little while, actually, since my last live stream. Uh, but today's live stream, I'm going to be talking through a few different things. I'm going to be talking through three film cameras that I'm really looking forward to using in 2023. I'll be talking about three films that I'm really looking forward to in 2023. And I'm also going to be talking about three Digicams. Three Digicams. Look at this bad boy. This is a Kyocera Digicam. Don't see many of these. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about that. Three film cameras, three film stocks, and three Digicams. So I'll be talking about that in a little bit. First of all, I'm just going to tell you about a little trip to Sydney I did. Went down to Sydney. I was actually in Sydney this time last week. So we went down last week, which was really nice. I took way too many cameras because I could. I had a suitcase and a, a camera bag. Uh, but it was really good. We went down, I think, on Wednesday. So I took a couple of my uh, Fujifilm X-Series digital cameras. Yes, I took digital, my friends. Here we go. This is my this is my favorite travel camera. This is the X-T5, and this is the 50 to 140. This is kind of heavy. Not as heavy as full frame, but... This is one of my favorite travel cameras, which is kind of weird because it is it is so heavy and bulky, but I really love the perspective you get from uh, a telephoto lens when you're traveling. So yeah, so I took that, I took my X100V, which I have up here, which is kind of turned into this weird unicorn camera that no one can get hold of. So there you go, there's the X100V, lovely camera. I used that in Sydney as well. And I took quite a few point and shoots, obviously. Uh, you know, I always take point and shoots everywhere. So I took some lovely point and shoots with me as well. I took the Minolta TC1, took the Ricoh R1S. Uh, what else? I took the Octomat, the Octomat camera. This is a camera which has seen me uh, get crazy amounts of people looking at this. I did a, a TikTok about this camera. I think the, the TikTok got like a hundred and fifty thousand views. I then posted the TikTok to Reels because that's what you do, and the reel on Instagram for this camera has got something like four hundred and fifty thousand views, which is crazy. You know, like if I knew it was going to get four hundred and fifty thousand views, you know, I would have got like hair and makeup in to make me, you know, have the appearance of being better looking than I actually am. You know, uh, so I never knew that this little camera would get me like 600,000 views across two platforms. So I've actually got a roll of film in there. I put a roll of film in that while I was in Sydney. Uh, I think it's still in there. Unfortunately, there's no film window, so I can't tell you what it is. I think it's, I think it's superior 400, this film here. Pretty sure it's extra superior 400 because obviously this is a, you know, fixed shutter speed, fixed aperture. I think it's something like one one hundredth F8 from memory, or maybe it's F11. I can't remember, but there's eight shutters. And, uh, you know, they've each got a little uh, little bit. It's kind of like if it, when you look at the back of these cameras, they've each got a little tiny bit of the film, you know, so they all fire sequentially like an action camera. And, they, you know, you get uh, eight little pictures on one piece of film, which is very, very cool, one frame of film. So, yeah, I've been shooting that in Sydney. I was actually on top of the ferry out to, where do we go, Watson's Bay on the ferry. It was a beautiful day on Sunday. We went out on the ferry to Watson's Bay, and I was just winding this up and taking <laughs> crazy pictures of Sydney Harbour. Uh, so back to Sydney, yeah. So it was pretty miserable weather when we were there, but I had all my little cameras uh, the first day was okay. We went out to Cockatoo Island, which was a lot of fun. I actually hid a roll of film on Cockatoo Island. So if you're in Sydney or you're going to Sydney, check out my TikToks because I did secretly hide a roll of film on Cockatoo Island. Uh, so yeah, if you go there, you'll be able to find it. Can anyone actually hear me, by the way? I am, I'm assuming that people can hear me. So if someone can say hi, it's four people watching. Say hi. So I know you're there. Otherwise, I'm just uh, talking to myself. And uh, yeah, so we went out to Cockatoo Island. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Keegan. This I'll, I'll come to the I'll come to the film stocks in a second. Uh, but we went out to Cockatoo Island, hit a roll of film, had a look around. Next couple of days, it was pouring with rain. This time last week, though, on the Saturday, it was still pouring with rain. And I actually, yay, excellent. Thank you, Keegan. Glad to hear it. Um, this time last week, I actually met up with some film nerds in Sydney. Yes, so I met up with Adam, Colin, Alan, Theo, and Jay, I think it was. Uh, and we had coffee at Circular Key because it was pouring. We couldn't really do a photo walk. Um, so Alan was very, Alan's such a lovely guy. Alan is the film sweats on Instagram. Hello, Coco. Great to hear from you up there in Canada. Nice to see you. Hello, Bangarang. Hello, from greetings from Obama land. Hi, Christina. How are you doing? So lovely to see you all. Well, not see you all, but you know, see see you that you're there. 
I said, well, we, we went for coffee uh, with these film nerds, fellow film nerds in Sydney. It was really great. But five of them turned up to, to meet little old me. Alan actually gave me a couple of rolls of film. Look at that. He got me some some P30 Ferrania. Has anyone ever, Ferrania, Ferrania? Has anyone ever shot that? He said, told me to shoot that at ISO 80, even though, no, he told me to shoot it at ISO 50. It's an ISO 80 film. And he also gave me a look at this, a roll of, of beautiful Ektachrome E100 slide film. Beautiful. So that was lovely. We couldn't go for a photo walk. It was just miserable, horrible weather. The next day, though, we went out to, it was beautiful weather, me and my family. It was sunny, like summer had come back all of a sudden. And we went out to a place called Watson's Bay, right on Sydney, in the edge of Sydney Harbour. It was beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous beaches. Me and my daughter hiked up to a lighthouse. My son wasn't well that day, so my son and my daughter sat on a park bench in the shade. Um, sorry, my, my wife and my son, did I say that? My wife and my son sat in the park bench while my daughter and I hiked out to the lighthouse for 40 minutes. My daughter complained the whole way out to the lighthouse, by the way. I don't know if you guys have got kids, but she's 14 and the whole way out there, she complained that she wore the wrong clothing. It was too hot. It was very warm, but it was a beautiful day. I took some pictures of the beautiful lighthouse with my uh, Octomat and my Minolta TC1 and my Fujifilm gear, my uh, X100V and uh, what else? I think I was shooting Adox Color Mission and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was a really nice trip to Sydney. And then, so I kind of had quite a few rolls of film uh, ready to send to the lab. But then last night we went out and I shot some more at a place called Eat Street in Brisbane, which is like all food trucks, food vans, and there's loads of neon, neon lights there. So I'll, I'll show you, um, what can I show you? I can't show you the photos, but I'll show you, I'll show you now. Um, Keegan has already expressed interest in hearing what film stocks I want to try this year. So that's a good juncture for me to tell you the three films that I'm most looking forward to shooting this year. So the first one is Kodak Color Plus. Now, people are probably saying, oh, man, like Color Plus has been around for years. But I, I've never really shot a lot of Color Plus. I, th I think I've shot maybe two rolls at the end of last year. And uh, I, I always looked down on Color Plus. I thought it was like a, a poor man's Kodak gold kind of thing. And I never really liked the results. I, I didn't think I liked the results. I actually look back at one of my my rolls that I shot. I think, I think it was with the Olympus XA maybe. And I was like, Wow, these are actually really good. I really like this. So I shot one of these through my uh, Ricoh R1. Of course, the results you can see in the Ricoh R1 video on my channel. And I love this film now. Okay, I'm converted. I'm a Color Plus convertee. I'm converted to Color Plus. So recently here in Australia, Kmart, which is a, like a discount variety store, they haven't been selling film for a while. And all of a sudden, they started shooting. Uh, they started shooting. They started selling Kodak Color Plus for $10 Australian a roll, which is about seven US dollars a roll, which is like less than half the price I understand that you get it at the States at the moment. So yeah, I actually uh, scooped up, uh, I already had about four rolls at Christmas and then I scooped up eight rolls from Kmart. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to shooting this. Now, some of you may have seen on different people's channels, maybe Molly Eclectochrome or Dave Mahali, the old camera guy. Uh, you may see that some people are in the Frugal Film Challenge uh, the Frugal Film, Frugal Film Project is actually a Facebook group. If you look at Frugal Film Project, there's a group. And uh, the idea is that you use one camera and one frugal type of film for the whole year. So I'm actually thinking, I did the Frugal Film Project in 2019, the very first year. I haven't done it since, but I am considering doing it again. And I'm, I'm thinking about using this film. Um, so that's the first film I'm looking forward to. The second film I'm looking forward to, I actually bought some of this as well, Extra Superior 400 Fujifilm. I've never really shot with this. I've shot with a lot of Fujifilm C200 in the past. I've shot a lot of uh, Fuji 800, Fuji 1600. Never really shot the old Extra Superior 400. So I just scooped up about 10 rolls of that. It was a bit more, ex a bit more expensive. It was 16, $16 a roll Australian, which is, I know, about uh, nine, 10 US dollars a roll, a little bit more expensive. Uh, so we'll see how we go with that. Uh, let me know if you've shot this. I think a lot of people have shot with this before. I really haven't. So yeah, I'm looking forward to shooting that. And I think the other, the third film, the third film that I'm really looking forward to shooting this year is Orwo NC500. So this is the color cinema film. Uh, well, it's, you know, it's a C41 film, but they sort of say it's like a cinema-like sort of film. Uh, you know, 35 millimeter film that Orwo have released. They announced it, I think, in July last year. They said it would ship in August. Uh, unfortunately, due to some issues with their, you know, one of their partners in China, it's only just shipping now in January. So hopefully that should land soon. Uh, so, it, yeah, I'm really looking forward to these two films. 
shooting some of these and I've got quite a few, you know, like about 10 rolls of each at the moment, which is great. And also the NC500 Orwo color film, which I'm really looking forward to. And with that that film, it's, it's rated at ISO 500, which is a kind of a weird ISO, right? So I'm thinking, you know, do I... Do I shoot it at say 1250 and get it ISO 1250 and I might push it two stops? I wonder how it will look pushed, if it will look as good as Cine still, or maybe I should only push it one stop. I don't know. I'm gonna try out a few things, and of course, you'll you'll see the results here on my, my YouTube channel. So let me just have a look at the, the comments here. Wonderful to see you too. Hello, thank you, Coco. Doing good. Lucky you. Yes, it was great, uh, Christina, hanging out with film nerds. Unfortunately. You know, we're, we're at one of the most, I, you know, I've been to probably, I don't know, maybe 30 countries. I've seen a lot of beautiful cities and places, but one of the most spectacular places I've ever been to is Sydney Harbour, Circular Quay. You know, you've got the, the, the Harbour Bridge, you've got the Opera House, you've got these beautiful green and yellow ferries coming in and out. You've got palm trees, you've got the beautiful water. Uh, so we ha got Luna Park in the distance. Uh, so we had all this going on, I met these these lovely film nerds. And unfortunately, we were stuck in a cafe for two hours because it was just pouring with rain. Well, it wasn't pouring, but it was continuous rain and it was cold and it, it was not nice uh, photography conditions at all. So it was lovely meeting the guys. We had a really good chat. Um, but yeah, no, no, unfortunately, no photography to be had at all. Uh, and, and the funny thing is we were all showing our cameras and everyone was showing their, oh, I think Colin had his X-Pan. Um, Theo had his Mamiya 7 and he was shooting that with the Pano adapter. Um, so yeah, Theo Panagopoulos, of course, of the Camerosity podcast. Yeah, he had the, the Pano adapter in there for his Mamiya 7. Looked very nice. Uh, what did Alan have? I can't remember what Alan had. Did he have an Olympus? I can't remember. I have a really bad memory. Uh, but everyone was showing their cameras. I had my little point and shoots and I showed my contacts DVS. The, the one camera though, and people sort of looked at my, you know, contacts DVS and said, oh, yeah, it is actually a really heavy camera. So they were like, oh yeah, this is heavy titanium, really heavy. But the one camera that people were like a little bit like, wow, what, what is that? And I don't know where it is, but it's my Fujifilm Natura. Uh, it's here in the background somewhere, but it's a beautiful little camera. Hang on, I will, I will grab it. I think I showed you, you guys have probably seen this if you watch my channel before. But um, this was the one camera everyone was like, what is that? Like, is that a digital camera? And I'm like, no, no, it's a, it's a film camera. So this is my little Fujifilm Natura. It is a beautiful camera, lovely and compact. This, I mean, mine looks like it's brand new pretty much. Uh, and on the back here, this is what everyone was marveling at. Like, they were like, is that a digital camera? I'm like, no, no, film camera. And uh, it's a green screen there. And if you if you press the menu, oh, I think it's because the, the film's are wound. But when you press the menu, sometimes it turns orange. Um, so everyone was kind of wowed with the old, the old Natura. So it, it was lovely to meet them. Anyway, back to the questions. What else can we say? I'm actually really warm. I've, I put the air conditioning on, but I don't think, I'm not sure if it's working. Let's have a look. Do I have any tips on how to replace light seals? Bangarang, do I have any tips on how to replace light seals on a vintage OM camera? No, I'm useless. I'm sure if you if you look on YouTube, it'd be a lot of people be able to tell you how to do it. Unfortunately, that's not my specialty. Um, for example, with my Ricoh R1S, there's a film window on the back where there's a light leak uh, comes from there. I just put tape on the back of the, the window. That is my that's my fix for that. So uh, in terms of replacing light seals on a vintage OM camera, I'm sorry, I'm kind of useless with that. Oh, Lux has just answered your your question. Excellent, thank you, Lux. Uh, Keegan, yes, definitely. Well, I think everyone's already, already rated Kmart here in Australia uh, with the film because. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people put orders in because I know that Lucy and Lux put an order in and I think online and I think their order online was rejected. I think I got one in just before, uh, you know, it, it all sort of sold out. What else? Uh, people are giving good uh, advice about the seal kits, which is great. Fuji Extra, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Yeah, it's um, it looks very neutral, Christina. Is that what the go is? I mean, C200's a little bit like that as well. C200's got nice colors, but they're kind of, they're not, they're not Kodak Gold. They're not uh, Color Plus. Those bright, you know, bold colors. It's a little bit more subdued. I, I wonder if Extra Superior is a bit like that as well. Hello from Poland. Hi Kalinka. Lovely to see you from Poland. I've been to Poland. Unfortunately, I was last in Poland in 1996, uh, which is probably I don't know how old you are. It could be before you were born. Um, but yeah, I was in Poland in 1996. Lovely. I really enjoyed it. I went to. I think I was there for about a couple of weeks. It was uh, very very lovely. Has anyone shot the black and white film Agent Shadow? What was your experience? Yes, so I have shot Agent Shadow, but I pushed it. Um, so also um, Bill 2, I don't know if this is kind of related. Bill, Bill 2, just Bill 2, by the way, was supposed to come to the Sydney meetup. Unfortunately, Bill was sick. 
Bill too has been shooting Agent Agent Shadow. Very hard to say. He's been shooting Agent Shadow, doing those trichromes. You know where you get the. I, I don't really understand it. It's it's so you know a bit technical. You, you get the green and the red and the blue, and it, you put them together and it, you get like it's kind of color image kind of thing. Bill actually shot Agent Shadow, the, the fireworks in Sydney, um, Sydney New Year's and New Year's Eve, and they look incredible. I think they're on Bill's uh, Instagram. I'm just going to go tell you where they are because you've got to check these out. It's probably not the traditional kind of looking Agent Shadow, right? Because it's black and white film, but Bill did some amazing work with it. Um, yes, yeah, so if you go into Bill 2's Instagram, which is B I L L T H O O. Go about four or five pictures down. If you see those fireworks color images, that's actually Agent Shadow trichromes. So check that out. But there's still, uh, yeah, still quite a lot, quite a lot of other people uh, who shot Agent Shadow, which apparently is apparently is is kept me four hundred. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Christina is doing the Frugal Film Project. Yes, I saw you in there, Christina, in the group using a Pentax K1000. It's a Kodak Gold 200. Nice. I've actually got a, a Canon AE1 program, which I got for 20 bucks. Uh, I was thinking, should I do do it with that? But but I'm thinking, uh, I'm not sure because um, I'm going to Japan at Easter and I don't don't really have the weight allowance to take a big heavy SLR with me. And of course, if I'm doing the Frugal Film Project, I want to take it on my travels with me. Um, so still waiting. Keegan is still waiting for JCH's new color positive film. Yeah. So I watched a little bit of the live yesterday with Bellamy. He does live on Instagram every week. Um, and, uh, he, he's got to the stage now where so many people ask him about Fugu slide film. He basically just says, I'm ignoring all the questions about Fugu slide film. Uh, so it'd be really interesting to watch that space. And hopefully we will, we'll see that for release this year. It's 3 a.m. here now. Yeah, of course. It's um, I, you know what? On Instagram, I didn't even put the European times for this because I thought it would be a little bit early. So I hope you're having a good morning, Kalinka. Yeah, Coco. Um, so Bill is Bill does great work with trichromes. I think he's got some other. Let's have a look. I think he's done some other stuff with Agent Shadow on his uh, as well. So definitely check that out. Um, yes, you did. Hello, Jamie. Yes, you did make it before it's over. I still, I've only got through my three favorite films so far, which is, well, the three films I'm looking forward to, which is Extra Superior 400, Kodak Gold, sorry, Kodak Color Plus 200, and Orwo NC500. So I may as well talk about now the three film cameras that I'm going to, yes, you did hear Trichrome. Check out Bill 2's Instagram. I'm sure you've probably seen them already. Amazing stuff from Bill. Really, really wonderful stuff. So now I'm going to tell you about three film cameras that I'm looking forward to this year. So the first one, who has who has ever heard of this, let alone used one? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I've been in a, a kind of, a, you know, a weird under a rock all these years. But look at this. This is the Ricoh MF1. The Ricoh MF1. Um, you know, actually, I'm going to just take a break for 20 seconds, guys. I think the air con has turned off. I've got to go back because I'm melting in this office. The door's closed. I'll be back in one sec. Sorry. Bye. Bye. <sighs> Sorry, back. Yeah, so I'm going to be flying around with the aircon settings. It was on 24. Like, I put it down to 22. You know, I've got solar panels on the roof. The, the solar solar energy will, you know, will pay for the air conditioning. Okay, so now I'm, I'm hopefully going to get some nice cool air in here. I'm not melting. What was I telling you about? The Ricoh MF1. Has anyone ever seen this? This is the weirdest camera. So this is the Ricoh MF1. Comes in, it came in a box from Japan. This was a, uh, a camera released in 2001. It's a really weird camera because it's got a program mode in the front there, the P, the green one, and then you can shoot at three different apertures, F5.6, F11, F22. When it's in program mode, the, the, the widest aperture is F3.9. It's got a nice lens here. Um, it's uh, it's actually a 30 mil lens, which is kind of weird for a point and shoot, 30 mil. It actually has a filtering. Like it's a point and shoot with a filtering, very strange. But it gets weirder, my friends, because it's also got manual focus. So on the top there, can probably see there the green ones like auto there's an infinity and then there's three is there three one two there's three different settings in meters uh for manual focus so you can set manual focus distance uh it's got exposure compensation in the top here and some different uh different flash modes but wait it gets even weirder this camera even stranger it has a flash right built-in flash it has a hot shoe 
Like who made this? Is like you know the, um, that episode of The Simpsons where Homer Simpson makes a car and it's just the most ridiculous thing with all these gadgets and weird things. This is like the Homer Simpson of of film cameras. <clears throat> uh, it's 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 kind of a. I really like it. It's it's kind of a weird camera though. It kind of feels premium in some ways, but yeah, it's kind of plasticky and it feels cheap in other ways. Uh, but this came out in two thousand and one. I think there was another one they released for export a couple of years before, which was very similar, called the Ricoh Thirty Five R. So I picked this up for I think it was. Oh, I think it was about 200 US dollars. I kind of remember uh, from Japan. It came last week. And so I've been shooting with that. I've done a test roll, which I'm going to send off to my lab. Uh, so yeah, it's the, it is the Homer Simpson of cameras. It's really weird. Like what weird stuff? We'll have a flash. We'll put a hot shoe on top as well. I mean, why not? Why wouldn't you? Um, so it's a really weird camera. I really enjoy it. It's got a really nice sound to it, actually. actually have I finished off this roll? Let's have a look. I'm going to turn it on. I'll give you the shutter sound if I have. No, I've got two shots left. So I can't play you. I can't play you. I can't um, fire the shutter button and let you hear that. But yeah, really intrigued, really intrigued about this camera. Now, the whole reason I found out about this camera was I researched five cameras that Ricoh Pentax should bring back in the wake of their announcement that they will be doing film cameras again, hopefully, fingers crossed. Of course, there is a video on my channel about that where I name the five cameras. Uh, it's got a nice little red background and it says five cameras Rico Pentax should bring back. So if you haven't watched that, check it out and see what you think. You see if you agree. Uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this camera this year. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. The second film camera I'm looking forward to using this year is one you probably already know if you watch my channel. It is the Yashka T3D. Picked this up for 95 US dollars at a camera fair. It's got the the NA scope at the top there. Kind of big and bulky. Haven't got a roll of film in there at the moment. Oh, geez, that was bright. So I can do that. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, apparently, you know, it has got a really nice, you know, Tessar 2.5, F2.8, F2.8 lens on there, um, 35 mil. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit big and bulky probably because it's a bit earlier, you know, what is it, late 80s, early 90s? Um, but yeah, re or probably late 90s, uh, early 90s actually. But yeah, really nice camera. I've only done a test roll through this to make sure it works okay. Haven't really shot it or put it through its paces. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hello, Suzanne. Lovely to see you. And um, the final camera, the final camera, third camera. So we've got these two so far, the, the Ricoh MF1 and the Yashica T3. And then for all you medium format fans, this is the third camera that I'm really looking forward to shooting this year. Yeah, it's the Bronica SQA. Yeah, you could definitely do a bit of a workout with that. Um, so there you go. I've got the, what's this thing called on top? The, is that a chimney? Is it a chimney? No, I don't even know what it's called. Medium format and me aren't natural friends, but yeah, this is a beautiful camera. You know, this has been called, you know, the poor man's Hasselblad kind of thing, but it's a beautiful camera. Uh, I've shot a test roll through here. Was really, really impressed with the results on Kodak Ektar. Had the multi exposure leave the wrong way. So the first four frames were on top of each other, but still uh, really amazing quality. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into a bit of this this year so yeah i've got i've got a couple of 120 backs um on this i've got uh you know i've got pro 400 h in that one i've also got the 645 back i don't really know how the 645 back works like i guess there's framing guidelines through the viewer i can't remember um but yeah i'll be interested to to shoot shoot through the 645 format i've also got polaroid back for it but i think obviously you only get the uh the square you don't get the full polaroid image uh so let's have a look at the uh, comments here so let's have a look, 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 look. I'm curious to know, oh, Coco, I'm curious to know your experience with the X100V. I've used the X100 cameras since the very first one. I bought the very first one in 2011. I really loved it. The JPEGs were so beautiful compared to my Nikon DSLR at the time. Couldn't believe how amazing it was. The only problem was I had small children at the time and the autofocus was really hit and miss on that first one. I think they brought out firmware updates to improve the original x100 but it's still what the autofocus wasn't it wasn't meant for shooting small children running around so i sold it i think i then later i got the x100t and then i got the x100f and now i've got the x100v look it's a beautiful camera um i really like it at the moment i've got this um i've got a black mist filter on there so i'll be doing a video soon on that this is a a nisi black mist filter um so that's a bit of fun I've been shooting some lights with that to see what they look like with the black mist black mist filter on. It is a beautiful camera. I mean, I don't know. I feel like in a way, Lucy Lumen actually said this in one of her videos recently, but I actually really like just having an X-series camera with the 18 to 55 on. Like, this, this is a really lovely camera if you can only take one camera and you haven't got much space. But, you know, in terms of versatility for what I shoot, 
I think in a way the an X series camera with the 18 to 55 significantly you know bigger not significantly heavier but significantly bigger but I think to me that would be more naturally what I would choose um, because I do like zooming in and out uh, when I'm taking sort of travel shots but yeah it, it is a great camera the film recipes are all interesting but they're also really annoying the film recipes are fine because you got to program them in and then you know you can't you can't with the the regular Fujifilm recipes you know the ones in the camera you know the Velvia and all that um, please correct me if I'm wrong anyone but I believe that with with those you can actually um, bracket film film sims so you can do Astia Velvia Provia and it'll take one photo with all three and you can get three different JPEGs across that but of course uh, you know you can't if you program your own ones in there, you know, Kodachrome or, you know, a Portra look, you know, film sim, if you program your own in, it, you can't bracket those, which is kind of annoying. And so if you want to try out different film recipes on a scene, you've got to press the Q button and change it all the time. So I, yeah, I, I do like it. Um, you know, is it worth the hype? Uh, I don't know. Um, just picked up the 18 to 55. The 18 to 55 is one of my favorite lenses for the Fuji X series system. It's a beautiful lens. It is way better than any kit lens uh, I've ever used ever. In fact, I wouldn't even, even though it's sold as a kit, I wouldn't call it a kit lens. It's a fantastic lens. Going back up here, uh, the Homer. Hi, Matt. Hello. Hi, Susanna. I said hi, Susanna. But I, yes. If you need a waist level viewfinder. Oh, interesting. Uh, I've, well, I think I've, I have actually got it the waist level of viewfinder as well, Jamie. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll show you what else I got for the SQA. This is my bundle of stuff for the SQA. And I've got, let's have a look. That is a, that's, oh, that's the back with Pro 400H in. I think that's the waist level viewfinder, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm, I'm useless with this stuff. I'm pretty sure that's the waist level viewfinder. Uh, in here, we've got another lens. I don't know what lens I've got. I think I've got the 150 on there, and I've got the, what the hell is that? My glass. I've got my computer glasses on, so I can't actually see anything unless I put it like that. This is the 80 mil lens, f2.8 80 mil lens. I think these are all leaf shutter lenses from memory. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I've got this, which is the, what is it, the speed grip or something? Yeah, something like that. Uh, I've got a, this is the 645 back I bought for it. Never used it, but hey, got a 645 back. And this is the Polaroid back. And I still have some FP100C. Um, so I've probably got about a dozen or 10 packs of that in the fridge. I'm kind of too scared to shoot it because it's so expensive now. I don't want to kind of, you know, just shoot you know, the dog on it. So, um, but interestingly, last year for the Emulsive Secret Santa, I sent uh, a pack of it to someone, a gentleman in France, uh, I can't remember his name, but anyway, long story short, he used this pack film for this project and he got listed by like the, I don't know, I think it was the National Portrait Gallery in the UK. Like, and there's actually an article on Emulsive about it. I can't remember the guy's name now, but yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing. Like a pack of film from my fridge got in the National Portrait Gallery. Unfortunately, it wasn't taken by me. It was taken by someone else, but good on him. And uh, so the film, the film is all still good. So yeah, I'll be looking forward to, to shooting that. Uh, yes, uh, would, uh, that is the waist level viewfinder. Good. <laughs> yes, um, I love Veronica cameras. Jamie says they're like budget Hasselblads. Yeah, like it is a really impressive camera, and I kind of feel bad. Like it sat in the in my office here for like three, four years, maybe longer, and I haven't touched it. So I feel uh, feel great. I must do a video with the Bronica and the Polaroid back. Yes. So I'm going to shoot another roll of film through the Bronica SQA Coco. Just to, I mean, the first roll turned out beautifully. I think I showed a contact sheet in one of my recent videos. I think it was my 2022 favorites and I, I showed the contact sheet. The contact sheet looked great uh, from the lab and all the images look great. So yeah, I'm going to shoot another roll to make sure I'm confident with it. And then I'm going to get that Polaroid out and, but oh, what, what subject am I going to choose? I, I want to choose something cool and not too contrasty. And anyway, I'll figure that out. Uh, so, okay. So we've gone through the three cameras. We've gone through three film cameras. We've gone through the three films. I'm now going to tell you, uh, about the three digicams I'm looking forward to using. So if you like digicams, put your hand up. You know, I'm putting the hand up. Can I have a glass of water? I'm also very, very pleased to announce that cool air is finally coming into this room because it's actually, it's probably like 30 degrees Celsius here today. There's a nice breeze outside. It's all overcast, but it's still quite humid. And in the house, you know, because we've got the house closed up because the air con, it's actually really warm in this room. Um, so without the air con, it's, uh, I feel like I'm in an oven. Uh, so, okay, so I don't wanna ruin my glasses. I put my glasses over here. Okay, so three digicams, three digicams. 
So the first Digicam, this is really boring. The first Digicam that I'm looking forward to using is this. I've already done a review of this on the channel, the XLM EXS1. I'm actually going to get uh, replacement batteries for this because the ones that it came with, the original ones, the OG batteries, only last like half an hour. So I'm going to order a couple of third-party ones. I'm going to take this to Japan with me. I really won't have much room in Japan because I want to shoot some stock photos with my Fuji and my big lens. And I'll take, I'll probably take the X100V. I'll take a couple of point and shoots. I really won't have much room for anything else. But this, you know, this is a 1.2 megapixel Digicam from 2000. Uh, so I'm going to take this. And I'm really looking forward to taking this to Japan with me. It should be a lot of fun. So that's the first one. Already done a review on that. The next two, though, you probably haven't seen on this channel before. So this one, so going back to, I don't even know when it was. Was it the start of this year? Was it last, no, start of 2022? Or was it beyond that? I can't remember. But one day on, I think it was Petapixel, um, I saw this article, you know, uh, I did your cams a new film. And I sent it to my good friend, Lucy Lumen. And Lucy did a video on it. I think her video blew up and she, I don't know how many thousand views she had for it, maybe 20,000, 25,000. Um, but one of the cameras that the, the gentleman who wrote the article, I think he's a Japanese gentleman, he wrote the article. One of the cameras he used was this one. It was actually in the article. And I was like, I saw this and like, it was a Kyocera digital camera. What the hell is that? That looks amazing. And, and ever since I saw that article and read about it and saw this camera and saw the photos, I was like, I really want that camera. So eventually I tracked one down in Germany. There's a gentleman in Germany. He was basically selling off all of his he has like the most amazing collection of vintage digital cameras. Um, so he must've been a collector and he's selling them all off. So I got that from him. Uh, this is the Kyocera DR350. I think it goes by another name as well, um, but it's it's hard to pick them up. I don't know if they didn't make many or they all broke or what the story is. It takes a uh, compact flash card. Can't actually see because I've got my glasses on. How do I get the card out? Well, it's got a compact flash card in there. You guys know what a compact flash card is. I don't probably don't need to show you. It's got a nice little screen on the back there. Uh, it's kind of a quirky camera to use. Um, when you take a photo, the, the compact flash light sort of keeps flashing all the time. I think it's because it hasn't got much of a buffer in the camera. And so you can't take another photo until it's finished writing to the card. Um, but here you go. Here's my son last night at Eat Street. There you go. I haven't actually downloaded these yet. I don't even know what they're going to look like uh, when I actually download them. Um, so I'm just going through them now. There's an ice cream sign at Eat Street. So these are all the kind of shots I was taking last night on film and also on Digicam. What else have I got in here? I got some nice sort of neon lights and stuff like that. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of heavy because I think it takes AA batteries. I think it takes four AA batteries. Um, there's my kids. But again, it's very bright by the look of it. Hopefully it's turned out okay. Um, but yeah, it's kind of heavy and I feel like I don't want to take it too many places in case I kind of drop it or something or there's a waterfall on there, but the waterfall doesn't look very impressive. What is that? There's some kind of flowers. I don't even know what half of these are. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. So I'll be doing a, um, a review on the channel very soon with this camera, the Kyocera DR350. I think it's from like 1997 or something like that. So one of the very early, uh, you know, Kyocera digital cameras. Um, having PTSD flashbacks of bent pens. What are, are bent pins? Ah, ah, pins on the, the Bronica, I'm guessing you mean. Because uh, is there an issue with that? Um, so that's the first. These are the first two. Ah, oh, from CF cards. I'm trying to think. Let me, let me get the CF card out. I can't remember ever having bent pins on the compact flash cards. How do you actually get this memory card out? I have no idea how to get the memory card out. Again, I'm not wearing the right glasses for this maneuver, but I don't even know how to, is, it, is that that button there? Oh my God, eject, eject. There we go, there's an eject button. Ah, oh, so the, the pin, there's, there's little holes there. I'm guessing there's pins in there, is there? Ah, oh, I've seen student cameras where they wreck when they push the cards in, right, yeah. So this is a, this is a, compact flash card it came with eight megabytes and uh yeah it's definitely not the, the fastest card because like you take a photo and you're literally standing there for 30 seconds while it writes to the card and you're waiting to take another photo but a lot of fun and uh, i'm actually going to download the photos today and see what they look like um, they look good on the back of the screen but as we know that means nothing and the third digicam i am really looking forward to using in 2023 i actually took this to sydney with me 
charged up all the batteries and I thought I, I, I'm going to take this out on the last day we were there on Sunday we took the ferry out to Watson's Bay beautiful part of Sydney very very expensive houses beautiful beaches um, lovely lighthouse you know you walk up on the headland and there's this massive expanse of Sydney Harbour and there's boats everywhere and I got my camera out it was actually in the uh, in the in the little um, what do you call it the leather pouch kind of thing when I took it out the lens cover was actually open um and i was like so the lens was so the lens retracts retra uh, goes out like that but the lens cover was open but the, and what had what had happened was somehow i must have knocked it it was in its pouch what the hell is the pouch man seriously i got so much stuff here i don't even know what i'm doing so here is this it was in here when i took it out of here the lens cover was open i'm like what is going on like and i think what had happened is i must have knocked it and it had stayed on in my bag and the battery was dead by the time I got out. So this beautiful lighthouse, beautiful harbour, beautiful beaches. And I had one digicam with me. couldn't take any photos because the battery was dead. Uh, so, yeah, I am. I thought at first I'd actually broken the camera somehow, you know, but luckily because they are kind of fragile. Luckily, though, uh, the camera is still going. The camera is still going. And um, yeah, really, really looking forward to using that this year. This was actually the first, not this particular mod, like this actual one, but this, the 6800 was the first digital camera I ever owned. So I think around 2000, 2001, I did some work for my father-in-law, my old father-in-law, my, my, my first marriage, and he actually bought me uh, this camera uh, as a thank you uh, in 2001. So I went around I uh, went to the Greek islands with this camera, went to New York with this camera. Uh, the only time I've been to America is when I went to New York in 2002, I think it was. So yeah, or maybe 2004. So yeah, this was the first digital camera I ever, ever used. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this again. I've already got like a stack of photos from the camera uh, in my archives. Um, so I'll be sort of taking some new ones and comparing that with the old ones. I'd love to take this to Japan with me, but it's just a little bit heavy and a bit big and I'll be taking other, so many other cameras anyway. So there you go. Well, I, I think I've kind of exhausted. I've told you about the three films I'm looking forward to using the three film cameras and the three digicams. Has anyone got any more questions? Cause I think I've got to go get my daughter from work soon. I think my wife just got home from her work. Let me know if there's any other questions. Um, I think we will be doing, um, we were supposed to be doing another uh, analog hour with Lucy Lumen and Matt Murray. Um, I think we'll be doing one in the next couple of weeks. So if you do watch that on Lucy's channel, look out for that very soon. It's actually been a little while since we've done one. We were going to do one at the very start of January, but I think because we'd already done goals episodes, I'd done a couple of episodes on my channel, you know, 2022 goals recap, 2023 goals. I think we were all talked out and we had nothing to speak about. So, um, yeah, thank you for everyone's support. Looking forward to hearing about all of your photographic adventures in 2023. Thank you, Coco. I love your collection of cameras, Matt. Coco, I love my collection of cameras too, but I actually get really anxious looking around the room. There's just so – you can see here, look at all this – what is all this stuff? I don't know what it all is. What am I going to do with it? I need to – I've sold quite a few cameras already, but I need to sell more, work out which ones I like and sell more, do reviews of them and get rid of them because – I kind of feel anxious. I've got so much stuff. I got a camera. This is Kalinka. I got a camera that takes four shots in each frame because I got exp Oh, wow. Because uh, you saw my uh, reel on Instagram. Which one is that? Is that the, the action sampler? Does it take all four at the same time? Because I think that's the action sampler. I think I've got the action sampler up there somewhere. So I've got, I've got the robot one, which takes three on one frame. I've got the action sampler, which takes four. I've got the Optimat, which takes eight. And I've got the Renchicardia, which takes 16, but it takes it across two frames of film. So, yeah, I've got all, I've got most of the multi-exposure, multi-shutter cameras. A lot, of, a lot of crazy fun. So there you go. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. Take care. Uh, get out there and shoot some film. Shoot some digicams. Have some fun. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Oh, I need a drink.